you for tuning in to Fish on Long Island. In this episode, I am going to show you guys how to put together a surf rod uh, for about $200. Uh, we're going to go with the Daiwa Eliminator 5000 series reel. It's a brand new reel out from Daiwa. We're going to go with the uh, SP Minnow Lure, and we're going to use the Daiwa um, Coastal SP Surf Rod. Uh, we're going to put this whole setup together with braid, and uh, again, it's going to be about that $200 range. We're not looking to break the bank here. I know there's a lot of surf reels out there as, as much as $1,200, but we're not looking to do that right now. We're going to make a surf setup for the beginner, for the expert, that's not going to break the bank. Something that the average man and woman can afford. So with that being said, let's put this rod together and see how it comes out. All right, so now let's talk about the reel. For the setup we're gonna be using, we're gonna be using the Daiwa Eliminator 5000 series reel. It's a new reel and it's very affordable. At some stores, you could actually find these reels for under $100. So for a beginner, surf fishing setup, it's a great reel to start with. To talk about some of the specs on the Eliminator 5000, these reels can range from the 2500 series up to the 8000 series. Again, the one in front of you is the 5000 series. These reels come braid ready. They're an aluminum frame and also have aluminum side plates. With these reels, which is nice if you're a lefty or a righty, it's got the slide and hand handle, so you could switch right there on the fly, no problems at all. Whether you're lefty or righty, your friend wants to borrow the reel, he's a lefty, you switch it out for him and he could use the reel as well. Uh, we have on this reel, the 5000 has a drag of 22 pounds max, and the gear ratio is a 5.7 to 1. The weight of the 5000 comes in at 22 and a half ounces, and your line taken per handle turn is 47.4 inches. So again, this is a great beginner reel for someone looking to get into the surf fishing, and uh, now we're gonna put the whole setup together. So we'll start with throwing some line in this reel. For this line, I think I'm either gonna go 30 or 40 pound braid, I'm not sure. I'm gonna see what I have laying around right now. But uh, either one of those braids will be fine. As you can see, it's a pretty beefy reel with some beefy drag. So going with that heavier braid is not gonna hurt you. I'm not too sure if you guys could see that, but what I mean by braid ready, you can see that little rubber piece inside the spool. When you tie your braid, you want your braid laying right on top of that rubber. And that's gonna prevent it from slipping in the reel. Um, also, if you had to, you could use black electrical tape you could put in there, uh, hockey stick tape will work. But like I said, this reel comes already braid ready, so let's get the line in the reel. So there's the spool with the braid on, and you can see the braid's running into that piece of rubber that's supplied. And that will grab the braid from slipping when you're reeling in a fish. Now, if you don't have a winding machine like we have in a store, you could simply use an old broken fishing rod, which I'm using here, and use that just for like a uh, spooling machine. Let's say, you know, you know, just put the reel on the rod, run through a couple guides right there. You can see that rod's broken. And then just manually put the line in. So I'm going to get this reel filled, and I'll get back to you when we're done. So now we have our reel filled. For this reel, I chose to go with a Daiwa J Braid 8 weave. Um, there's two weaves that you can get. You have the Daiwa J Braid 4, or you have the Daiwa J Braid 8. Uh, the difference between the two is basically just the weave itself. The Daiwa J Braid 4, I would like to use more for bottom fishing with a structure, say fluke, blackfish, sea bass, porgy. Uh, it's a little more abrasive, that line. The 8 weave is a smoother, uh, better casting line, in my opinion. So for all my spinning reels, if I'm going to be using it for surf fishing, casting, you know, plugs, whatever it may be, bucktailing, I'm going to use the J Braid 8. And again, for this reel, it was a J Braid 8, 40 pound test in the green color. Um, I did a full fill on this one, but if you want to save money, you know, make this a more affordable setup, you would definitely probably want to do a mono back and let's just say fill half the reel with mono, throw an all bright knot in there and then have your braid on top of that. You really don't need the amount of braid I put in here. If you put 150 yards to 200 yards of braid, you'll be fine. Uh, and that's basically doing the mono back. And, and again, you're going to save a ton of money doing it that way. All right, next up, we have to choose our rod. Again, we're trying to make an affordable setup. So for this, I went with the uh, Daiwa Coastal SP Surf. Uh, I have all the measurements right there and I, the specs on the rod right there. So you can see, hopefully that's clear. This is a nine foot rod rated for a 10 to 20 pound test. And it's a one to four ounce cast, which is fine for the surf. You're really not gonna be casting more than that with this setup. It's a nine foot rod, like I said, two piece. And uh, this rod, I believe you could probably get uh, probably for about a buck 25 to a buck 40, somewhere in that area. Maybe a little more, give or take. So let's put the rod and reel together and we'll see how it looks. So as you can see, there's your lower part of your rod. Got the reel attached. Now we'll continue on. Make sure when you get that reel on it, you really want to push up on the reel, 
grab it like this and just push push up tight and then really crank down on his the uh the lock in uh nut i guess if you want to call out of the real seat and tighten it up pretty tight you don't want your reel coming loose when you find a big fish that's for sure so definitely make sure you got that nice and snug we have our rod mounted to our reel and we have the two pieces now together and as you can see we threaded the braid through all the guides so now what we want to do is we're going to put a mono leader on top of the 40 pound braid. So for that, I'm going to use this quattro line. I like to use this multicolor, as you can see that, and the camo line. And that's a 40 pound mono I'm going to put on top. You could go with fluorocarbon if you needed, but we're going to go with this for now. All right, so now what I did is a simple all right knot right to the mono. So again, I'm just repeating myself a lot here. It's the 40 pound J braid eight, and we all right a knot into the 40 pound mono. So now I'm gonna take probably about six to eight feet of mono, it depends. Uh, sometimes you wanna go a little short if that you feel that knot's getting caught in the guides. As you can see, I trim it really, really tight to try to prevent that as much as I can. You could also do the FG, which would probably be a little bit of a smoother knot to go through these guides. But for this rod, I'm gonna probably do about a six to seven foot leader, and we'll see how that works out. So now we're basically getting closer to completing this setup. What I like to do on the end of the mono leader, I'll use a, usually do a loop knot or again, these tackle angle clips. These power clips are really good. This happens to be the 75 pound uh, power clips. We could attach this. If you're not sure how to attach one of these clips to the line, you can always look on the back and it tells you where everything goes, how to put it together. So let me tie one of these clips on and then we're gonna attach one of these SP minnows. This is a new color, I believe for Daiwa. This SP minnow. And then we have your plain chromes, and we'll tie one of those on to the rod. So let me get this on, and I'll get right back to you. So mono gets tied to here, lure gets slid on to there, slid down, and it rests right there, and that's where your lure is going to be. So let's get this tied onto the mono. I'm going to do a simple clinch knot to put that on. Okay, so here's your clip, and you can see where I connected the mono leader to. So it's on the top where that, the angle of that clip is. And that's where you're gonna slide it on the lure. And that's your TA clip, and that's the 75 pound one. All right, now let's get a lure on here, and we're almost done. So now here's your completed lure setup. You see we got the TA clip into the split ring of the lure, and we have the new color SP minnow. It says on the package that this is a SOS yellow color. Definitely a cool looking lure. Straight out of the package and onto the rod. All right, and if you don't, for those of you that are wondering what lure this is, see if I can get that in for you guys. That's the skew for the lure right there, and that's basically it. And that's how you rig up your affordable fall fishing surf casting setup, nine footer, with the Daiwa 5000 Eliminator reel. All right, there's your completed setup. As you can see, all rigged, ready to go. Take it to the surf. Now this whole investment you have right here, you're probably gonna be anywhere around $200, basically for everything, two, 225. Again, I've seen this reel on sale at some of the local tackle shops. Uh, it's under $100. The rod I've seen anywhere from 120 up to 140 and change. So, the lure is probably about $15, and the clips, I think, uh, are, hmm, the small pack of clips are maybe $6. Again, give or take a few dollars in each thing. But for basically about $200, you could have yourself a perfect setup to go out there, jump on a surf, catch some of these fall stripers, bluefish, weakfish, albies. This rod's going to handle everything you could throw at it.